All right. Welcome to Plug and Pay, a talk show where we invite interesting payroll professionals from all around the world to talk about thought-provoking, inspiring topics that um, move the global payroll industry today and tomorrow. We release new episodes every two weeks and you can find them on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on Apple um, Podcasts, on Google Podcasts and on Spotify. Today, I'm super excited to have Nick Day join us on this show. I think Nick is someone in the payroll industry who really doesn't need an introduction. Uh, most people have somehow crossed path with Nick. Um, so rather than me introducing him, maybe Nick, I'll just pass it over to you to say a few words about yourself. Yeah, super. Well, super stoked to be on the show, first and foremost. It's really nice to be on the other side. Usually I'm a uh... I'm in doing the interviewing either as a podcast host or in my profession as a recruiter as well. I'm interviewing candidates all the time. But a bit of background to myself. So I run a payroll specialist recruitment firm. Uh, we operate globally. We've been going, I've been in recruitment now for 20 years and I've only ever known payroll recruitment. It's all I've ever done. It's the only profession I've ever worked in. So um, I've been through it and seen it change significantly. Um, I also host the Payroll Podcast, which is a global podcast and the first podcast released for payroll professionals. Uh, I'm host of Payroll Question Time. Um, yeah, I mean, everything and everything payroll related really is kind of, I'm around the periphery of everything. I do everything except process. I don't get involved in that, I leave that to the experts, but I talk about it, write about it, um, recruit for it and um, yeah, and interview people about it. So super excited to be on the show. A life around payroll, that's fantastic. Um, so, so on that topic, you know, you've been working, as you just mentioned, for the last 20 years in recruiting and then focus on, on, on the payroll space. Um, and a lot of people that end up working in payrolls or work there for, um, for a long time. Um, but I'm curious in terms of your experience, you've obviously interviewed and talked to hundreds if not thousands of professionals in this space. Um, any estimate how many people actually end up in payroll because they plan to be there and get into that space versus people that somehow just sort of fall into it, stumble into this as a career? I love this question. I love this question for a reason, because this year I'm actually on a bit of a, uh, I don't know, a mission, I guess, to change the way people think about payroll, because you're absolutely right. I think, you know, when I came into this industry, 2003, um, everyone tended to fall into the industry in inverted commas. You know, I don't know how I got here, but I ended up in payroll. I you know, came through either accounts payable or was in HR or just someone just needed a helping hand. And here I am 20 years later. And I think, you know, I interview a lot of payroll professionals on this subject. And I would say probably 70, 80 percent, maybe even higher of those professionals turn around and say to me, Nick, you know what? I fell into payroll. And that's great. But I think over the years, over the time I've been doing this, it's, it's come to, 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 to me to say, well, actually, did you fall into it? At some point, there must have been a choice. And I think historically, people have used the word fallen into payroll for the same reason I would say I fell into recruitment. It was actually a choice for me, but we're not necessarily that excited about the sector. We, there's a little bit of, I don't know, guilt or, or shame maybe about being involved with, with recruitment sometimes because it's sales or payroll, because it's not HR or it's not finance or it's not glossy. But actually, for those that have chosen it and really proactively have taken that as a choice, I think you can really own that with passion now. And those that do tend to choose it tend to be those that progress the fastest. There's no fear or shame associated with that choice. It's actually, you know what, this is a fantastic profession that has huge amounts of career opportunities, potential to learn IT, um, finance, HR, get involved with people, new, whatever it is you want to do, kind of pay all offers, all of those things. So I'm really trying to push people to, I've got a hashtag going at the minute called choose payroll, but owning that choice. Because I think if you look at those that are at the top of their game in payroll, and uh, there are many, many professionals I could name that are, that are at, that, at that place. Actually, most of them, if they really think about it, there was a choice they made where they said, actually, I'm going to stick this career through. I'm going to take this opportunity because this is something I really enjoy. And actually, it's a really fascinating, exciting and varied career. And I'm really hopeful that if we can own the choice of choosing payroll as a career, then we're going to get more people coming into the industry. Um, I do a lot of talks at, at local schools trying to tell them about what payroll is. And they've never considered it as a, as a potential career choice. And that's crazy for me because it's such a fantastic career for those that are involved in the sector. But you often discover that when you're already in it. Right. And you're, I want to make sure that those that are school leavers, taking on apprenticeships, whatever it might be, actually go, you know what? That profession sounds great. 
that sounds right up my street. It's it's not, you know, I'll, I'll quote one of your first guests, Max van der Kusper Sink, who said, you know what, payroll gives you the best of HR, the best of IT, the best of finance, the best of all these different things. And I think that's really true. So in answer to your question to go back, I do think that probably a huge percentage of people consider themselves to have fallen into payroll. I would urge all of those individuals just to go back and go, actually, what was it that made me make that choice? Can you rephrase that now that you've considered it to say, actually, actually, I did choose it. I own that choice. And I'm really, really glad that I did, because these are the things that have happened as a result. Um, I think now it, the profession has more to offer than it ever has done before. And I'm sure we'll go through some of that. Um, yeah. I think now it's much easier for people to choose it for those reasons. And I also think that certain people and bodies and other things have made it more accessible. You know, you can now come in through an apprenticeship program which didn't exist before. So and I'm really excited about the future. And I like to think that if we have this conversation 10 years on from now, that actually 78 or 80% of those individuals will all be saying, I chose payroll at this point for this reason. Let's hope that changes. Love that. I love that. Yeah. And I, I, I absolutely agree that I think payroll is such a versatile role and function in the organization and exposes you to so many different things um, in, um, in the organization, in the business, uh, working with lots of different people. Um, it is a fantastic role, but um, just wanted to follow up on the point you made about um, you going out talking to people and trying to you know, expose them to and um, inform them about what payroll has to offer. Um, evangelizing kind of the function that we're all working in. Yeah. Um, do you think there's, there's anything, um, you know, beyond your own kind of personal outreach, anything that the industry at large could do to just make the role more appealing, more attractive, more well known to young people out there, right? That might not, you know, leave school or wake up one morning and say, oh, I really want to work in payroll. Um, I, I think you probably don't hear it a lot yet. Yeah, yeah. And, what can we all do to make it more, you know, that people say, wow, I want to work in this, in this, in this. I think area. the first thing I would say is shout, you know, I don't think pay more people shout enough about what they do. It's, a, I would say overall compared to other sectors, it's a little bit more introvert than others. And yeah. it surprises me because actually there are some great payroll characters who aren't introverted at all. But when it comes to talking about payroll and, and as a career choice piece, we're a little bit quieter than perhaps other sectors might be. So I was, at first I would say we've got to shout about it a bit more. It was amazing seeing Scott Morrison during the pandemic actually come out, the Prime Minister of Australia, and say, you know what? Well done, payroll professionals. I wish Boris had done the same over here. I've got a friend of mine who works in payroll recruitment in Australia, and he was, you know, the, the, the shockwaves that sent through when that speech came out, just giving it that credibility, raising that profile. And that was a real public figure talking about the importance of payroll. And I think that's when we're talking about shouting, these are the bits that make it exciting. Why is payroll so important? Do the younger generations really understand what it is? I think that 99% of the population outside of the world of payroll consider payroll to be, I get a pay slip. It's accurate. It doesn't bother me. I don't even know who does that. It's never come into my mind to think about who's behind the process that's given me that accurate pay slip. We only seem to come back to that pale professional when something's gone wrong, which means that you're dealing with complaints, you're dealing with the, the, the negative side of payroll. But the reality is the payroll department, you know, are, are typically responsible for the largest bit of OPEX, you know, the operational expenditure of any business, typically. That's just the value within that is massive. Yeah, telling yeah. someone you can get involved in a part of a business that is responsible for its highest aspect of, of expenditure. So one slight improvement in the way that you manage that can have huge ramifications on the success, the profitability, the, you know, the organization objective they're trying to achieve, whatever it might be on that business. And you have an opportunity to influence that. I think the one other major shift, and it has been a big shift, look at payroll when I first started, which was very transactional, very operational, very, um, I guess, repetitive to a certain degree. You'll know, from, you know on the tech side of things, Mark, that automation has taken a lot of that heavy lifting out of the way. So now it's much, much, much more strategic. And people want to be involved in strategic work, work that genuinely has an impact on performance. And you can see the results of your work. You can see that if you make one change here, one streamline change, one piece of automation, actually the long-term effects on the bottom line profits of that business or the performance or the attrition, whatever it is, can be quite significant. So I think we need to shout about it more. We need to shout about the exciting bits, which are the strategic elements to it. 
the amount of data you have access to is typically larger than any other function you'd be involved in. They say now that um, data is the, the most valuable currency in the world. So if you think of that as a payroll professional, you come into payroll, A, you get access to the most valuable commodity in the world, which is data, and more of it than any other profession, right? You get access to managing the most, you know, um, where there's more turnover in terms of, of money being handled than any other aspect of the business. It's now strategic. One slight change can therefore have a monumental impact. And I think that's where the excitement is. And you could those changes, of course, can come in various guises. It may be you implement a new piece of tech. And you, that's where you're led. You love the technology side. Well, there's opportunities to do that in payroll. Maybe it's you actually like the data side and the analytics. Well, there's definitely opportunities to look at how your workforce is being managed. Where are their regional pay gaps, for example? You know, when are people taking leave? What benefits are being utilized? Whatever that might be. There's so much scope now within payroll. But I just don't think that new people coming into the profession are aware of it because I don't think the industry as a whole shouts about it enough. I'm not putting that, that burden on the industry bodies you know, that we're all familiar with. It's actually those in the profession themselves. And I think, again, that comes back to choosing payroll, proactive, loving the profession, loving the reasons you selected it, loving the reasons you, that you're in it, showing that passion that so many people in payroll have for the profession. And then just, I guess, um, using using that as a mouthpiece to others that aren't involved to tell them what a great profession it can be. Yeah, no, I agree. I think there's a lot of, when you talk to people in payroll, lots of passion that you sense, you know, in every conversation, but broadcasting that out beyond the industry into kind of the broader, um, you know, marketplace, uh, people that are looking for new career opportunities certainly resonates as one of the things that we can all do more of in, in the industry. And just on that, so someone who then decides, hey, maybe payroll is for me as a recruiter, what would you say are the skills that someone going into payroll should have? And I know that's a very broad question because as you just described, you can take payroll in lots of different directions. But I'm just curious if there's any sort of classic payroll skill set profile that you would there's, look for. There's definitely some classic payroll trends. I just want to park that for what, I'll come back to that in just a minute because I'm, I'm going to sort of reference that question in my mind. It is a really, really exciting profession once you understand it, once you get over that hurdle of they just deliver pay slips, which is often the perception outside. And using that then to, to bring that into your question, the first thing is probably resilience. It's an incredibly resilient profession. If that hasn't been shown during the pandemic, then nothing will, right? But you know, they weren't payroll people typically weren't furloughed. They were absolutely key, considered key workers because we had to keep the UK pay. But they were throwing, it was I think legislation changed over 200 times or there or thereabouts during the furlough period, right? Got to pick that up with no real guidance or, or guidance given only hours before you've got to deliver. That's one aspect of it. But also, as I mentioned earlier. Typically, you only speak to your payroll department when something's gone wrong. So if you're not resilient, if you can't handle the, uh, those potential complaints, because, you know, when you think about how that impacts an employee, an employee sees a pay slip, sees a bonus or a payment isn't correct in their eyes. It may be correct, but they, they interpret it to be something else. For them, it's suddenly, well, maybe my mortgage won't get paid. Maybe now I can't afford the fees for this. And it goes into, you go into disaster mode and everything, you know, starts to manifest and become worse and worse. So by the time they've called the payroll department, you know, they're in potentially in breakdown mode and payroll have got to be able to, the other end of the phone or email, handle that, then you've got, you're going to struggle. So alongside resilience, you need to be able to act at pace and be able to change at pace. I always talk about the payroll industry as being comedians. The, the natural thing I think about, you've got to be adaptable. You've got to have different bits of camouflage on for different bits of situations. So I mean, these are softer skills maybe, but I think resilience, passion, uh, the ability to change your pace. You have to have a numerical understanding and ability to identify issues. So attention to detail is, is essential. Um, and I don't just say that, you know, because often a lot of professors say they need it. I think in payroll, it's absolutely critical you know, to be able to identify where there are issues going wrong, where it's affecting efficiency, so identifying data trends and things to improve efficiency for business as well outside of the pace it process. Um, I, yeah, I, th I think they're probably the main things, really. I, th and I know that they are transferable into other sectors, but I think if you don't have those core soft skills, then you're going to struggle generally in the world of payroll. I think everything else can be learned, right? Like skills can be learned, attitudes can't. So it's for me, I would always focus on the attitudes over the skills because there are a plethora of places you can learn about payroll and develop those skills, but you need to have the right attitude from the outset.
Yeah, no, that's very good. And, and, and just on that point in terms of having sort of the, the right aptitude, um, do you see that kind of the, 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 the values and the, the skills that you're bringing to the function, have you seen that change a lot over the last five, ten years? So do you think, um, or do, also as you're looking forward, do you think we're, we're going to need different kinds of um, people, profiles, in order to succeed in, in, in this space? Yeah, I, th I think I have seen, I think those core things have always remained. Uh, I think where I've seen change is change to land of opportunity. And there are so many different pathways now within payroll. So I think it's become more ambitious. When I started, the career really did have a ceiling at payroll manager or head of payroll. Um, now you can, you know, we're seeing more and more payroll directors come into the fore, which is great within that transactional strategic setting. But actually now we've identified recently there's over 60 different payroll pathways. You know, you can go into payroll sales, web development specifically for payroll software. Um, you know, you can go into implementation, project management. So I think the ambitions within the profession have, have changed and, and in a good way because it's allowed the, the, the industry to advance. I think the we're asking more other functions now. So there's a lot more inter um, uh, departmental re relationships growing now. There's a much better relationship, in my opinion, between payroll and HR and payroll and finance. And I think that's that's really important. And that's been a massive progression. When I started, I genuinely say this is true. When I started in payroll recruitment 20 years ago, payroll was often that windowless building with one individual, you know, who'd been in, as you say, for 20 years, almost forgotten and just underappreciated. And I remember having so many conversations about payroll people feeling underappreciated. I have to say that type of conversation has definitely changed. The conversations now are much more about, look, it's not about appreciations, but how can I get from A to B? And how can I take my business with me? How can I help the organization follow me on this transitional journey? Um, it's a, the community is growing exponentially. A lot of people now from an introverted profession typically has become a little bit more extrovert in the sense they're now asking for help. So I think skills in networking have definitely come to the fore. Skills in just asking questions and being more demanding of your stakeholders and that stakeholder management piece is definitely stronger now than it used to be. Um, and I think you need to be more technically minded perhaps now than you did when you first came in. I mean, when we first started, when I first started, there were very few systems at all supporting payroll professionals. I remember systems like Kalamazoo and you know, real basic systems, whereas now systems are, are unbelievable in what they can deliver for you. So it's, it's about managing the system now much more than managing your, your, your Excel spreadsheet. So I think technically it's definitely advanced. And, and, and the other thing I'm curious about is, do you see people in their career path kind of shifting from working as a payroll professional in a organization managing payroll function or payroll team and then shifting to uh, kind of the provider side as a service provider or, or the other direction? Do you see more sort of crossover? Is that something, a trend that's happening or? Um... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, I think the bigger trend is not necessarily a willingness to want to work for a service provider necessarily. I'm not saying that's completely untrue, but I wouldn't say that's the generalist move. Where we're seeing the move is people getting to a plateau potentially in payroll management and going, you know what? I love payroll management for all these skills. I've implemented an in-house system and I really enjoyed it. And I'd really love to implement systems for other people. How do I do that? And typically, if you want a full-time role implementing software, as an example, then right. you need to go supplier side to achieve that. Or you take the consultancy route and you work for loads of different clients on different occasions. But of course, that type of work is not as guaranteed as a permanent contract. So you see a lot of people go client side where they want to get more um, more of that kind of work. That could be payroll transformation type work, payroll advisory consulting type work, uh, software implementation being an obvious one. To get that on a permanent basis, you typically need to go on the software provider or payroll provider side. On the flip side, of course, you've got those individuals that have come through a completely different route into payroll. They may be started as a data analyst. They've got involved in implementing payroll systems. They've loved the payroll industry. They've loved the people they've worked with. And they actually go, actually, I, I like the system side of things, but I want to get more involved in the operational mm -hmm. side. So maybe they'll come the other way and get a payroll management role right. in-house. That move is less, is less, is less uh, common, but it's certainly lots of people move to, to support yeah. side. You know, I can think of a few individuals that sort of crossed over in both directions, as you mentioned. And it always strikes me that when I talk to them, they have such an incredibly powerful perspective from both sides, um, having worked kind of, you know, in the role themselves, and then also having seen kind of what, 
what it takes to provide services into that role. So um, I think that's a... That's and of it. course, software providers give a great foundation for those that want in-house payroll. So if you're managing, if you're part of a, a payroll provider doing client payrolls, for example, A, you learn those client servicing skills, uh, the ability to be client facing, managing multiple clients at one time, where you have to bring out that extrovert side of you, that customer service yeah. element, a huge rise in payroll positions we're seeing now are related to customer service. You can go into, for example, uh, payroll customer success is a new position that we've identified post-pandemic that's really coming to the fore. But also if you're leaving a bureau type environment for a service provider and you go in-house, well, you're going in-house with skills in, in varied payroll deadlines, different frequencies, the ability to handle different client complaints, seeing how to work with vendors in terms of vendor management. So there's a plethora of skills that can come from, this, from that side, the managed bureau side into in-house environment and vice versa. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. certainly see a lot of those kind of moves. So talking about what's happened post-pandemic, one of the big sort of um, buzzwords is the great resignation, right? How has that impacted the payroll world? Uh, are you seeing that, that happening in payroll as well? Hugely. I, I, I put my hands up and say, as a recruiter, it's probably been the most exciting, busy time I have. I've ever experienced, which has been a bit of a shock going from the, you know, the, the start of the pandemic where recruitment was not top of everyone's agenda. Let's be honest, things definitely went a little bit quieter. Yeah. Right now, yeah. I have never, ever seen it busier. And I think the Great Resignation has had a huge impact on the payroll industry because it, we're seeing it happen in real time right now. Um, we're, across our clients you know, and the people that we've worked with, we're seeing 70% of, managers, of, of payroll managers at the minute having some kind of payroll recruitment requirement. That's massive. When I started in this industry, it was always what we would call a candidate rich client short market. We have more candidates than we have clients. It's absolutely reversed. There's a massive war for talent. It's really hard to find you know, enough candidates for the, the, the jobs we've got coming in. It's a really positive place to be if you're working in, in what I do, which is payroll recruitment. But there's lots of reasons that that's happened. And the pandemic has definitely been a huge um, you know, reason for why we're seeing what we're seeing. The first is, before the pandemic, the idea of payroll people working from home was just an imaginary one. It couldn't happen. You know, it wouldn't work for all the reasons that people would have given at that time. And I won't go into them now because there were too many probably to mention. But the reality is they had to. And you know what? It didn't fall down. It worked. It worked every hour under the sun. But we got, you know, the, the payroll industry kept the UK and the world pay. That's been a huge shift. So to, to come out of the pandemic and then expect payroll people to return to an office environment full time, hasn't happened doesn't mean business haven't wanted it but pay all people have voted with their feet and said if you're going to make me do that i'm going to move you know i know i can deliver this from home i know i can deliver in this in this setup so i don't need to take that choice people have also generated savings from being at home they're saving on commuting costs all the different things that go with it so it could actually be a salary drop now to to return to an office environment and actually we've seen in our industry a 4.9 percent um, increase across the board for payroll salaries which i think is really positive i think it's almost a correction but that's really really good and i think it can go further so as you see the salary salaries increase people go well actually not only can i move and get a better work-life balance i get a better remuneration at the same time so it's win 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 so that's all happening you've also had a lot of uh, time for people to sit back and reflect so the pandemic, probably not as much time for payroll people because they were working flat out. But the reality is it allowed people to sit and think, what is important to me? You know, is it my family? Is it my work-life balance? Should I really be doing 60, 70, 80 hours a week when my other friends and other professions are doing 37 and a half? My contract's 37 and a half. I'm doing double that each week. And people have reflected. And now when they've come out of the pandemic and they realize there's some security there because of the volume of jobs available, they've gone, actually, I'm going to change. I'm going to change because I'm valued. And this is a really big, big shift for me, a massive cultural shift in the way that people are viewing payroll now. They're saying, I'm valued. I have value. I don't need to do this for this. I can do the same job with a, with a company that's going to value me. So we're seeing a lot of moves, not just in payroll, but across other professions where people are aligning their own values and behaviors with the values and behaviors and mission statements of a business they want to work for. And that's been a massive shift. I mean, there are loads of other things. I think there's probably 10, 20 different reasons that, that a perfect storm have brought all these things together to encourage people to make a shift now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lack of progression, manage, whatever it is, Ultimately, workplace workplace flexibility, value, and how you feel, work life balance, 
um, better salaries are probably the core reasons. Um, and also there's the, there's the, of course, the knock-on effects. If someone leaves one position and there's been a huge shift, then someone else needs to replace that role, which the domino effect means we're still recovering from those dominoes that have left earlier and people are trying to replace and recover. And, and some people are still stuck in the dark ages. You know, we've got HR and, and financial directors saying, we want to replace this payroll person and we're going to pay why. And I've gone, well, I'm, I can't help you. This is what I do, but I, I can't. There's no value. You're undervaluing the profession. Find someone with the experience you want at that salary level. It's just not going to happen. Um, and I can't then you know, confidently find you someone that I have faith in to deliver that service at that level. You have to increase it or go elsewhere. Um, yeah. No, it's great to hear um, the, the outlook for the payroll profession. Clearly, you know, it's very bright. Um, also, just based on my own anecdotal experience, looking at some of the, the jobs and roles that are being posted on LinkedIn and other social media, it seems like there's lots of, lots of movement, lots of exciting opportunities every, every day, every week. I come across roles where I'm like, wow, this sounds like a fantastic role. And um, yeah, it's nice to see well, that. Similar to yourself, you know, in Ireland, uh, Mark, but you know, the, the other thing I should mention is we now, because we've gone so remote, type of work we know we can deliver well that's taking a lot of the borders away you know i can find someone now to deliver a polish payroll who lives in spain or a uk payroll who lives in france and that's definitely opened up the, the doors playing field is just that much bigger yeah absolutely yeah. if you can get the employment legislation right behind it actually now the, the, the where you get talent from has massively expanded and that's that's opened up more opportunities for people as well which has been i think a really really positive change for the profession um and it's really exciting um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely been another shift. Absolutely. So we're going to switch gears just slightly. I um, uh, want to ask you something more personal. Um, I know normally when I talk to you, there's some guitars in the background. I know you've just changed yes. office, so the guitars haven't, haven't moved yet. But um, I'm curious about the guitars. Um, apparently you like to play guitars, I take it. Um, um, I do, yeah. What, what, what kind of um, music do you play? More classic? rock uh, what's what's your what's your guitar i'm a massive bruce springsteen fan for those that know me will know the that boss. So oh, yes. the boss is definitely on the list i mean i would say i probably display them better when i'm not here today but better than i play them um if i'm honest it was one of my pandemic things to pick up but the, the actual truth is i've played the drums for over 20 years so i'll consider myself a much better percussionist than i am than i am guitarist um, but i love but music. the drumsticks on the wall don't look as decorative they don't. Absolutely. I'm a full drum kit also, and uh, not quite as attractive on the wall. But uh, yeah, I've been a drummer all my life, um, and I, yeah, I like the guitar. And I just love music. For those that know, I've obviously released a payroll song as well called My Payroll. I know, I know. Yeah. We're, is, there, is there another one in the, in, in the, in the making? I think it's, there it's is, time to... Enough, there is, great. Great. That's good there to is, there is, there is. It's along a kind of Iggy Pop theme, so keep keep your eyes uh, and ears peeled for that. Um, I'm working on it at the moment. And on this one, I'm, again, like the last one before, I wrote the music. I didn't sing on the last uh, track. If anyone has heard it, they'll probably know that already. But I did write the music. I did write the lyrics. For this one, um, it, I'm, I'm hoping I'll actually be playing the music as well. So we'll wait and see. I, I think you should do a live performance somewhere. Um, like... Iggy, Iggy Pop style with some stage diving, Nick. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we'll see what happens. There's definitely a, a theatre performer in there somewhere that, that likes to come out. Pa passion for payroll. You know, there's going to be lots of people there that will, uh, will catch you. Um, great. Well, listen, um, what we're going to do at this point is we're going to go into a part that we call our lightning round. Um, if you watched one of our previous episodes, you've maybe, maybe seen that. What we do is we basically ask some rapid questions, um, and really for you, first thing that comes to mind, um, just kind of give us your give us your your thoughts, your answer on on that. Yeah. Okay, ready to go. All right. So first one is, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, the obvious answer for me would be a footballer. I mean, I played football to a pretty good level uh, when I was a kid. I was addicted to football, football mad, Spurs fan for my sins. That, that already makes, makes two of you. We had Rob Faulkner on, on our previous episode, and he yeah. also, also wanted to be a footballer. So there's a whole team coming together. Well, funnily enough, though, if I actually said what I wanted to be as a genuine career choice that could have worked out, because football is probably beyond my, uh, my skills, weirdly, up until about the age of 16, I was desperately wanted to become a leisure centre manager. I kid you not, because it, for me, it had everything I loved, which was just sport and the ability to manage it. I mean, it, it's not at all what I'd want to do later on. But at the time, I always wanted to have my own leisure centre. That just seemed like <laughs> such an exciting thing. Uh, obviously, it never happened. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. There we are. 
I love that. Um, we already talked a bit about music, but I'm curious about um, what kind of music do you think works best when processing payroll? What do you think people should be listening to when they process payroll? Well, they should definitely be listening to the song that I've done. There's a little plug here for you. <laughs> My payroll career, it's on Amazon, iTunes, go and find it. So that's definitely one. If you want a Friday fun time, that's definitely one to put up on a Friday. It gets the whole, uh, whole office going. It's also our whole music at work. Uh, what should they be listening to? Now, I think the industry generally is, is pretty easy listening stroke alternative as, a, as an industry, I think. I think the boss probably, with my favourite uh, musician, probably sums up what I would expect most of the other uh, people in the industry probably listen to that kind of music as well, you know? Hard hitting when necessary, a little bit political. Yeah, you know, yeah. you, can, you can raise it when you need to. It's got a few ballads in there as well. It sort of has that persistence and resistance kind of, um, you know, he's, he's like incredible performer, goes on for four hours when he gets on stage, kind yes. of. And every know. song tells a story. And you know what? Payroll people have the best stories and a very, very dry sense of humor, which I love. And I think you've got to be in the industry for a little while to understand that because it doesn't always come out straight away. Um, and I think that kind of relates to the boss as well a little bit. Perfect. Uh, what sets payroll professionals apart from other, other professionals? Definitely the resilient piece I mentioned earlier, but I'll go back and say they're just comedians. The ability to adapt to constant change constant change they're always able to adapt and they just keep going on regardless to software changes legislation changes the pandemic massively highlighted that right but i think it's the perfect animal if probably the question i would take is well, who, what would they be it'd be a chameleon um you've got to be a chameleon you've got to be able to put different camouflages on for different times um, and be resilient at the same time um so yeah that's that's probably hard how to sum it up and, and keep your sense of humor even when people are Hackling you or not, uh, throwing throwing rotten tomatoes at you, right? Um, well, I think the payroll community does that really, really well. I, that's probably the thing I love most is when you really get into the industry, the characters, the humor that's underneath the surface is just fantastic. You know, you can have your belly aching laughing, but you've, it takes a little bit of time to take those layers off. But it's a, it's a great, great community. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's like a, it's like a, I I have to say I've worked in different industries, and payroll is like a big fraternity or sorority or whatever you want to call it, right? Everyone sort of it, it has a true family feeling to it. People, you know, give each other a hard time, but they're very um, supportive as well. It's it's incredible. Yeah, and and, and non-competitive. Which is, which is lovely because they will go out of their way to help others, you know, not, not to, to forward yeah. their own uh, prospects, but actually to go, you know what, if you need help, I'm here. You know, let me help you. I think one of the most powerful sales things I would give if I was starting out in payroll recruitment is just ask someone what something means. Are oh, you implementing a new system? What does that mean? Please tell me. Because actually, payroll people love to impart their knowledge. They'd love to tell you about what they're doing, what their challenges are, what they've done well. And they're very humble, very modest. Um, and incredibly, incredibly supportive. Um, and there's people in the industry that I've called when I've been at my lowest, and you would never, you'd think you'd go to your friends, but actually, uh, you know, my close friends from university, but sometimes there are certain people on earth are watching this that I've gone to, and I've said, you know, just needed to have a, have a shoulder to have a chat about, and they've been phenomenal. It's, yeah. it's, 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 I can't, can't speak more positively about the industry. Great. Good. Um, I think that's, that's it for, for today, uh, for our session. That's all we have time for. So Nick, any, any shout outs um, as we wrap this up? Any shout outs you want to leave us on? Yeah, there's probably a couple I'll make. The first is, of course, I host the Payroll Podcast. So if you love shows like this, then please do subscribe to that. I'm sure we're going to share some listeners. Uh, the second is I'm CEO of JGA Recruitment, which is a specialist payroll recruitment firm. We do operate globally. So if you're watching this and you've got any hiring requirements, please do go to jgarecruitment.com. Uh, we've also launched on our website the UK's first and most advanced salary benchmarking tool. So if you're interested to know what you're worth at the moment with all this talk about careers, then you can find out by putting in your specific details Sales, qualification, size of payroll, frequency, all that kind of stuff. And you hopefully get a bit of an accurate understanding of your current value in the market. And of course, there's the My Payroll Career song, which I mentioned earlier as well. So yeah, check all those links out, all available on our website, jjrecruitment.com. Thanks again so much for being on our show. Um, great, great to hear your perspective on what's happening um, in, the, in the payroll space in terms of different um, developments from a recruiting and career development perspective. Um, this episode um, is available as all of our episodes on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, and Spotify. Um, if you like the show, then please make sure you subscribe to it so you can get uh, future episodes. 
uh, and like it as well, of course, so we can spread the word to the um, broader community. So Nick, thanks again so much and look forward to uh, interacting again soon. I've enjoyed every minute. Thanks for having me on the show. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. Take care.